what if Jade is not what you think it is? In this video, we're going to be discussing a very controversial topic that will challenge even the gemologist's understanding of nephrite jade. With the help of the mine owners of Washington Jade, Rodney and Nathaniel Cook, I'm very excited to dive deep into the mysterious cat's eye jade and search for the answer. Is it real jade? Chatoyancy. That is the word gemologists use to describe the cat's eye effect, a phenomenon most well known for its presence in cat's eye chrysoberyl. Many are perplexed to see jade on the market touting this rare and exotic characteristic. Many reputable professionals controversially claim that this mystery gem is not jade. To understand this argument, we have to examine what makes jade jade. Is it chemical composition? Is it crystal structure? Is it culture? What is the material called cat's eye jade? What makes it unique? What's the story behind this beautiful gemstone? What is nephrite? And what are the minerals that are associated with the gemstone nephrite? Actinolite and tremolite. First, let's take a look at the incredible cat's eye jade that we're going to be discussing today. Our jade is a kind of a pale green. We, you know, the, the stuff in the main faults is kind of a pale green. Mm -hmm. Sort of a blue tint to it. It's kind of a blue cases. tint to it. Even though we're close to Seattle, we're right 20, 30 minutes from, you know, the I-5 corridor, nobody really has discovered this. Nobody's really done an extensive job of exploring the area. This material is really special and perfectly aligned with Jade's reputation has a mysterious locale. We, not being geologists, we're not using a geological model to find the Jade necessarily. We understand understand what they are. We're using the baseline geology to get it in the ballpark. In the ballpark. Right. But we're looking at correlations. So we started dragging electronics around up in the mountains and figured out real fast we didn't have to do that anymore. You'll be walking through a section of the forest where you're prospecting and you'll just notice a shift in the plants, the way they, they mitigate the uh, toxins from the soil or just the amount of species, uh, the species composition will change from one area to another. And that gives you a general sense of when you've moved into or out of a serpentine area. It's important to note briefly that GIA actually published an article in summer of 2022 on another type of cat's eye jade. That particular cat's eye jade was jade eye jade or fei choy. More specifically, omphasite jade believed to be from Guatemala. The material we're discussing today is entirely different. But if you wanna learn more about that, I'm gonna include a link below. Jade originally was just basically a, a really sophisticated trade name because if you, jade includes, you know, of course, um, jadeite as well. But if you go back in history, it included turquoise and carnelian. We've mentioned it many times before on this channel. There are two gemstones gemologically called jade in the US, nephrite jade and jadeite jade. However, their definitions are not as straightforward as say a diamond, a single crystal gemstone defined solely by its crystal structure and chemical composition. So like basically a diamond is defined by how its carbon atoms are aligned. Both jades, are polycrystalline, poly, multiple crystalline crystals, aggregates, also known as rocks, meaning that there are multiple minerals inside the gemstone. In the case of nephrite jade, the minerals we need to understand are called actinolite, ferroactinolite, and tremolite. In nephrite, you have a microcrystalline structure. Actinolite can form fairly large crystals, mm -hmm. individual crystals. So there was a group, an outfit in Thailand 15 years now or 10 years ago had actinolite cat's eye. It was actual full-sized actinolite crystals harvested from Wenatchee area in Washington in which they cut cabochons from, but it was a single crystal. Actinolite nephrite, which is the terminology, either actinolite nephrite or tremolite nephrite would probably be the most descriptive term because it essentially tells you that it's a micro crystalline version of mm -hmm. the same mineral. In other words, you've got little microscopic crystals interfelted. It's like a massive version of the actinolite. Now, tremolite doesn't typically do this. Tremolite crystals are tiny. You don't get individual crystals big enough to cut a cabochon out of to get a cat's eye effect by, uh, on, on its own. They are typically would be, if you can find a pure end member, would be colorless. But when they're interfelted together in a perfect unoriented fashion, you get this white effect. 
And then on top of it, these dolomite derived jades will have a lot of different subtle colors to them. And a high level of translucence is important. And these are all different types of substitutions in the amphibole structure. And the Chinese have actually done very significant research on that to determine which of the locations in the amphibole structure are replaced by what. Cat's eye jade is a trade term more often referred to as cat's eye nephrite, which is found in many locations all over the world. The blue cat's eye jade that you're seeing here from Washington Jade, a US-based company with a mining operation in Washington state, may be some of the rarest cat's eye nephrite in the world. We found that upper find, it's got several giant blue boulders. It's beautiful blue nephrite. One of the things that the Chinese told us about Chitoyans is that what happens is from the perfectly unoriented, uh, unaligned microcrystalline structure, you start to get orientation. First, you'll start to get a little bit of alignment towards the edges of the stone where things felt. And this will start to produce a chatoyance effect. And if you're in a really high grade jade where that takes place, that's where you get the killer cat's eye nephrite. We're just following the existing trade name that it was established quite some time ago, long, many decades ago. It also sort of depends on what level you're looking at the stone at? Because if you're looking at it from a purely mineralogical standpoint, you would call it probably actinolite or tremolite, something natural mineral name. Right. Whereas if you're looking at it as a carving stone, you'd almost certainly call it nephrite because you wouldn't be interested in anything that wasn't an interfelted version of actinolite and tremolite. Nephrite is defined as a rock, meaning a mixture of two or more minerals in varying composition, specifically from the amphibole group, more specifically the tremolite actinolite series, where the fibers are tiny and felted together. By nature of this definition, nephrite jade is extremely tough, but Nephrite is not defined solely by its chemical composition, which is calcium, magnesium, silicon, and oxygen, although that is an essential part of it. White nephrite jade is considered pure tremolite. The presence of iron, which is what we classify as actinolite and ferroactinolite, creates a green color, and what we call black, which is really just dark, dark, dark green. Actinolite and tremolite have a really similar crystal structure, and near identical chemical composition. So they may have some overlap in a rock and can sometimes be indistinguishable. Are you starting to see why it's complicated? If you go look up actinolite now in the, the International Mineral Association, you'll see that actinolite was originally identified back in the 1400s and then it was redefined a decade or so ago. What they've done is they've added ferroactinolite to essentially the description. So what nephrite is, it's, it's, not, it's a rock, it's not a mineral, and it primarily consists of tremolite. It's part of the solid solution series, ferroactinolite and tremolite. And the change in the solution series is at the tremolite end, you, um, even though the end member really doesn't exist, you would have 100% magnesium in the stone. Versus iron versus iron. And then at the ferroactinolite end, you have essentially 100% oh. um, <laughs> or, or curtain field on, 100% um, uh, iron in certain key locations, in the classic, you know, locations for an amphibole. They changed that from, it used to be basically 50-50, you know, people in the, in the trade generally would say if it's 50% if it's or more iron, it is actinolite, and if it's 50% or less, you'll get um, tremolite. So you run a Raman spectrometer with some of the old definitions in it, you'll get tremolite. If you run it through x-ray fluorescence, you'll have a number for iron that puts it into the actinolite range. So right now, if you're up, the ferroactinolite end member is, uh, you know, totally black, and it comes up to about 50%, according to IMA. And then from 50% iron to 90% iron is actinolite. And then from 90% and above, or a lot of the purists would like to see 95% and above, you have tremolite. Jade is varying. Now quartz isn't jade, serpentine isn't jade, bowenite isn't jade. Those things are made of different chemicals. Their structure is different. So it's easy to get confused and to try to group things as jade and not jade when more complicated than that. 
I know this is a little bit more in depth into the science than most of the videos that I have. Let me know if you like the sciencey geeky stuff in the comments. Quick side note, this video is sponsored by Golden Smoke, 18 karat and sterling silver bullet jewelry made in the USA by a designer jewelry brand based in Colorado. Visit the link in my description to learn more. Nephrite can contain minor to trace amounts of diopside, chromite, the serpentine polymorphs, and many other minerals. You can't call every green rock jade. Words have to have meaning. So what is it exactly that defines nephrite? Is it toughness? According to Western gemologists, who I really respect, including Jill Hobbs in her article, The Jade Enigma, which I absolutely love, and Richard Liddicote, a leader in gemology, the answer is yes. But the modern Western trade believes it's more complicated than that. And the Eastern trade may disagree completely. Think about it. How tough is tough enough? And how do we measure that toughness? Classification of jade, if it's going to be based on science, can't be based on arbitrary science. Nephrite jade is considered the toughest gemstone in the world, but it varies in toughness. You are gonna have some nephrite that is tougher than other nephrite. Jadeite's the same way. Because they're aggregates, you have to consider all of the different factors, such as formation. The range of toughness in jade depends on its geology and its chemistry. When you read the papers that say cat's eye jade isn't jade, their reasoning, their only reason, is because it's less tough than other jade. I don't think that's reason enough for me. I would say the, the toughness is pretty substantially affected by alignment. The more alignment you have, the less interfelting, and thus, you know, you lose the inter internal strength of the material. Hardness-wise, it, it changes a little bit. Uh, the I like to refer to it as the axis of chatoyance. It's basically the, the uh, predominant direction along which the fibers are aligned within the cat's eye nephrite. Around that axis, it'll be a little bit softer, but on the ends of the fibers, it'll be much, much harder. It's entirely possible that the certification of nephrite may be dependent on the lab that tests it, but what does that mean for the customer, for the international market? What does that mean for the trade, and who determines what we call jade? You have, you have the Western geological community sort of trying to overlay scientific terminology and classification onto a, a system of understanding jade that's existed in China for right. thousands of years and is culture. The rock hasn't changed. You know, the rock is the same thing, you know, regardless of what anybody calls it, you know. And, and, and what we found is there's a general acceptance in the marketplace um, for, for the Chinese community, even here in the U.S., they know what nephrite cat's eye is. They see it, they scoop it up. And, and, and just suddenly it's become a little bit more of a controversy because the green cat's eye has been around forever. The Siberian has been, been in the marketplace for, for quite some time now. I have seen some really pretty blue chatoyant nephrite rough coming out of Siberia. We may not be unique in the world, but it is probably going to turn out to be the rarest of the cat, nephrite cat's eyes. We're pretty comfortable with the current trade name of nephrite cat's Eye, but it does require a footnote. Lotus Gemology calls cat's eye jade nephrite cat's eye in Jade a Gemologist's Guide, which is the most comprehensive text on jade available today. Given their international influence on the trade and the public, I'm inclined to adjust to their nomenclature. Additionally, jade is more than a gemstone. It's part of an 8,000 year history that most Westerners simply do not understand. As far as I'm concerned, what jade is should be determined by the Chinese market. Would love to know your thoughts. But not quartz and agate and serpentine. I mean, things that are like chemically and structurally jade, right? Like quartz is not the same. The, the jade market is as big as the diamond market, but it's almost all in China. It's highly fragmented. Some areas, you, you have a lot of regional preferences. It's also very important to the Chinese location is, is very important as to where the jade comes from. So they've actually developed analytic techniques to determine scientifically where through analysis, chemical analysis of the jade to determine whether or not it is a Chinese white jade or if it is a foreign white jade. Generally speaking, what happens is the it, it, there's a continuity. From start, if start from a reference point at the top of the best jades, the increasing iron makes it increasingly green until you get all the way to the other end and it'll just be so green it looks black. According to the Chinese papers, what causes the blue is the substitution of titanium and chromium and uh, manganese potentially in the um, structure for either the iron or the uh, magnesium. Jade has a long and incredible story of romance, betrayal, 
and controversy. There is still so much we don't understand about jade. Even today, it is an alluring and elusive gem. So let's dive deeper into the cat's eye nephrite coming out of Washington State, USA, and learn the story of American cat's eye jade. We have 26 claims and six miles of these giant loads, and they were formed primarily by interaction with the serpentine intrusives and a phyllite, which is a source of the silica, and you get a metamorphic reaction there. And we're about 75% tremolite crystal, microcrystals. So we're technically, even though you were 75% magnesium, it's technically under the IMA still actinolite. What about the mines that the material is coming from? We have four loads, four loads that are they're fairly significant. The one that I initially described, the fillite based one, which is has really nice black jade and high quality um, dark green. Typically, the high iron nephrites or semi-nephrites or, or whatever, and the amphibole, is serpentine derived. Whereas the highly valued white jades or off-white jades are dolomite derived. So the dolomite derived jades are pretty much all considered, you know, and have a tendency to be gem grade. And then you have these various other color substitutions that lend to the different colors. How rare is gem grade material in the Washington jade mines? Do the tremolites and the actinolites stay randomly distributed in oranges? If they, if they start to layer out and felt at the edges of the stone of a, of a large boulder or, or, or a seed, as we call them, do they start to segregate out? And then what other kinds of patterns are formed as these fibers? You get rosettes, you get columns, you get columnar sections, you get all kinds kinds of po pretty much any possible orientation that exists takes place. But it, as that happens, the quality of the nephrite decreases. Mm -hmm. And eventually you drop out of what people would call gem grade into a lapidary grade, and then you drop all the way down into a semi-nephrite. Unoriented microscopic fibers are the absolute best. Then you'll start to get some felting a little bit, and that's when you start to see the absolute best of the cat's eye effect, the chatoyance effect. How does chatoyant blue nephrite compare to non-chatoyant blue nephrite coming out of Washington? They're pretty substantially different. Um, that's part of the reason why we focused in on the blue cat's eye is because it makes sense for us to run a micro quarry, you know, a small operation, very green, very committed to not messing up the environment in the surrounding area, uh, because we're producing a small amount of high-grade, high-value material. We do have a bicolor. One of the things in the paper on the coloration of, of dolomite derives was the oxidation that takes place to turn the really pretty colors into more browns and yellows and, and things like that. And that's essentially losing a valence level with oxidation. And so we have one that's bicolor. The, the outside of these stones will be green and the inside will be blue because they're in, in where the cracks have penetrated. It'll be a brilliant green in many cases, you know, a chromium green, brilliant material. Like what you'd see out of Canadian. Yeah, stuff. what you'd see out of the top quality Canadian stuff, yeah. yeah. At this time, based on the current research and information I have been given about Chinese culture, I choose to call this material cat's eye nephrite and embrace it as a jade, with the caveat that it may need to be handled with more care than other nephrite jewelry. However, I understand both sides of the nomenclature argument, and I don't disagree with a professional choosing to call it cat's eye actinolite. The most important thing is ethical disclosure when interacting with the customer and respect for the material and the cultures that treasure it. No matter what it's called, the blue cat's eye jade or cat's eye nephrite coming out of Washington is absolutely beautiful. And I hope to see more and more customers asking their local independent jeweler for it. As for the trade, I'm asking that more attention be brought to the nomenclature of jade in its various forms from industry leaders and educators for the sake of ethical sales trade education, and transparency towards the end consumer. Comment below how you define jade and what it means to you. Don't hold back. Tell me all your thoughts. 